<laughs> okay, there you go. All right. I'd like to call the November 10th, 2020, I'm sorry, I would like to call the December 1st, 2020 Committee of the Whole Meeting to order. Please call the roll, Ms. Henry. Alderman Green. Excused. Alderman, Alderman Del Van Besser. Who? Present. Alderman Hunt. Alderman Hunt. Hunt here. Alderman Mary Jane Van Buskirt? Here. Alderman Azure? He's excused. Alderman Nems? Present. Can you Alderman hear me? Walters? Here. Alderman Emerson? Here. Alderman Myers? Here. Alderman Ward? Here. We have a quorum. I'm going to ask for approval of the November 10th, 2020 Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Mr. Myers, with first and second would be Mary Jane Van Buskirk. Any comments? Any comments? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Alderman Emerson? Yes. Alderman Myers? Yes. Alderman Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Alderman Ford? Ford is a yes. Alderman Hunt? Yes. Alderman Mims? Alderman Mims is a yes. <clears throat> Alderman Bill Van Buskirk? Yes. Alderman Walters? Yes. Okay, meeting minutes are approved. Number two, Rock Island Trail update. Damon Hodges, City Administrator, what do you have for us, sir? Yes, David. Uh, this evening we have Matt Davis, uh, Project Coordinator from Jackson County uh, for the Rock Island Railroad. Some of you have already probably met Matt Davis in the past, and I know a few of you contacted him in the past. So uh, I'm going to hand the, uh, <laughs> the wheels over to Matt, uh, per se, to talk about the trail. And uh, we we'll kind of go from there. Matt has a, uh, a uh, presentation, and then they'll be open for any questions you may have regarding that. Good evening, Matt. Yeah, I'm uh, I had no audio. I'm sorry. <coughs> um, you might do it the other way around. I think we may be better off. Can you hear me, Matt? There you yeah. 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 yeah, we can see it better. Thank you. Go ahead, Matt. Excellent. Um, hello, good evening. My name is Matt Davis. I am the Rock Island Project Manager for Jackson County Parks Plus Rec. And I'm here today to provide a brief update on the Rock Island Trail Project. And I can share my screen, I believe, with this button right here. Okay. Does that look good for everybody? Lovely. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, so thanks again. Uh, and again, my name is Matt. Um, I'm going to hold some time at the end for questions and answers. So um, I'll kind of run through these slides quickly because I do have quite a few of them, but I'll... Uh, if you need me to stop or, or have a question about something, feel free to jump in if you need to. Um, these images are from our the southern half of our project, which is open currently. Uh, the big image in the middle is um, from our grand opening ceremony of, in June of 2019. Um, I, I thought this would be good to put in there since um, we'll be doing one of these soon um, in your community. So looking forward to that day. Uh, hopefully early next year. Let's see. Oh. There we go. Um, first of all, some basic information about the corridor. 
Um, the, the corridor that Jackson County purchased is 17.7 miles long, about 350 acres. It is a multimodal rotation corridor. Uh, so um, we not only plan to uh, have the bike and hike trail in there, but also uh, hopefully transit at some point in the future. Uh, the trail component will be 13 and a half miles and we'll go from Truman Sports Complex to uh, Southern Lee Summit. We recently rail banked this corridor, which means that we took it out of the national freight network um, so that um, freight returning is no longer a threat and that we can now preserve it for trail and transit. Um, we view this as a regional trail spine to connect to a number of our other regional trails, which you can see on this map. Um, uh, Little Blue Trace, uh, the three trails retracement right through downtown Raytown, um, the, the Blue River Trail uh, and, and others that will hopefully connect it in the future. And then finally, uh, we view this as the Katy Trail connection. Um, there is a gap that will remain, but we are working to uh, find solutions to, to closing that gap. The schedule for completion, um, we started construction in the south half in early 2018. It wrapped up in June of 2019. Um, the southern half of our trail is six and a half miles. If you haven't been out there, I recommend you go check it out. It's beautiful. There's some really neat landmarks, including a big tunnel under Bannister Road. Um, it'll kind of give you a little bit of an insight into what you'll be seeing in Raytown, um, hopefully uh, early next year. The current project is our uh, phase two, kind of the north half. It is currently under construction. Um, the, the, the trail will start on the south end at Brickyard Road, which is just south of the 350 in Noland, and it'll go to the Truman Sports Complex. So this one will be 7.1 miles. Uh, we hope to have it probably in late winter, um, you know, we're getting into the kind of the cold part of winter here pretty soon. So, um, you know, it's going to be, they'll be able to get everything done except for what can't be done in very low temperatures. So, you know, pouring concrete, um, for example, or seeding for some of the grass and, and things of that nature. So there may be a few things that we need to finish up uh, once it warms up a little bit, but we'll be, we'll be pretty close to being completed here in the next few weeks. So um, we'll have five trailheads in on this trail. Um, the northernmost trailhead will be at the stadium complex. We'll have another one near downtown Raytown and one in, at Woodson Road. Um, on the map here, you can see Brickyard. We've actually pulled that one out of the project. So that will not, uh, that will no longer be included in the project. We do have a trailhead at 98th Street and one at Hartman Park and Lee Summit. And there will be one more at the very southern end um, in, a, in a future project, Gesundheit. Um, the trailheads will be pretty basic in their first iteration. A couple, there'll be gravel and some will be paved, some will be gravel, but uh, you know, they're just gonna have usually 20 parking spots, um, some basic signage, uh, some you know, benches, trash receptacles, things of that nature. Um, we, the, the trailheads were a place where we could save some budget by making them kind of basic. We do hope though, over time that we can kind of develop some of these trailhead areas. Um, on the right uh, of the screen here, you'll see, this is a concept that somebody had for uh, the railroad street area. Um, you know, these are both rail, railroad street and other areas. Um, you know, we hope to develop these areas and these trailheads uh, over time, um, you know, through collaborative partnerships with, you know, whether it's, um, you know, business organizations, uh, nonprofits, municipalities, whoever, the, whoever wants to become involved um, and, and work with us to try and develop these areas. And that would be for things like bike share or programmable space, you know, where we could have a festival, for example, or something like that. <clears throat> I mentioned transit earlier 
And um, we partnered with the KCATA to acquire the corridor and, and um, their interest in the corridor is transit. Uh, it's kind of a long-term vision. Um, we have built the trail with the intention to preserve the rail bed uh, where they feel that transit is, is more imminent, where, where transit will come sooner. So from Kansas City through Truman Sports Complex to downtown Raytown, we have avoided the rail bed completely. We have built the trail a minimum of 25 feet away from the, from the rail bed. And that space can be preserved for a transit project in the future. That is what KCATA sees as their phase one um, and then south of 63rd would be kind of a phase two going down to 470. Um, I think phase one is, you know, anywhere from, you know, maybe five to 15 years. It's kind of hard to say. Um, you're probably, you know, KCATA may be able to hire some or to, uh, to provide some more insight on that. But from 63rd south to 470 and from 470 south, I think those are, those are very long-term projects. We're probably looking at the 20 plus year range. Um, and it has a lot to do with demographic changes and, and jobs and a number of other things in the region. So um, I do think that downtown Raytown is the most viable short-term project we may see from KCATA in the short term. This is what you'll typically see uh, in that northern portion uh, where we've, we have the trail kind of offset from the rail bed. Um, and then south of 63rd, you'll see sort of like this where we're on the rail bed. Um, this is just kind of a typical section. So it'll you know, look differently all over the place, but, um, but that's kind of how we do that. And I'm, I'm gonna show some photos now of the corridor. Some are new, some are a little bit old, but I think you'll be able to see that a depiction of this. Um, and it'll be probably in one of my later slides, but this is the trailhead um, at the Truman Sports Complex. It's gonna be pretty minimal. The parking uses lot L, which is this overflow lot that you see there for, for the Chiefs games. Um, we're gonna move the gate from up near Blue Ridge Cutoff and it'll be back farther so that folks can access here, they can park and they can walk or ride their bikes um, up to the trail. Um, this kind of half moon shape at the bottom of the screen with concrete here, that'll be where our amenities are, benches, bike racks, trash receptacles, signage, things of that nature. Uh, this is between Blue Ridge Cutoff and 47th Street. And on the right, you can kind of see where the old rail bed was, that, that kind of flat area. That's where the transit component would go. Uh, and kind of on the left in the center of the screen, you can see the trail. That was when some there was some freshly poured concrete there. This is all now actually been seeded in and it looks great. You can walk there from the trailhead uh, at the stadium complex, by the way. Uh, it's a pretty, fairly short walk. So, you know, if you wanna go check it out, that's a good way to access back there. Uh, this is a wall and um, this is between 53rd and 56th street. Uh, the trail will go just to the kind of the left or behind the wall. Um, and again, you can kind of see that flat area at the top where you'll have the transit component has, has space. Um, this wall will get a cap and it'll get fencing and, and the trail will be just to the inside of this wall. Um, so again, the trail near 59th Street, uh, you can kind of see that where the, where the uh, transit component may go. You can see the old 59th Street bridge there to the right. The crossing at 59th, I'm sure you've all seen this at this at this point. Um, Here's one that's a little bit more recent. Uh, this is the trail as it will pass under 63rd Street. Um, you can see the grade separation on the right, so kind of that big um, that big hill to the right. There's actually going to be a small wall there to, to retain that earth, but um, there is a connection to this to the sidewalk on 63rd street on the south side of this bridge so trail users heading south can go under the bridge and then they can kind of do a you know a a, a loop backwards kind of 
um, stay to the right, the far right, and you'll loop back onto that uh, 63rd Street Bridge, and you'll be able to access uh, 63rd Street from there. Just a photo from down below, kind of showing the size of that wall. Um, pretty big wall down there. Uh, this is continuing south toward the trestle bridge. You can see where the trail turns and goes underneath the, the bridge there. Um, this is another really, this looks really neat. If you go out there and take a look at it, I'd recommend parking on railroad street and walking up. Um, you might wait until, you know, 3.30 or 4 in the afternoon. That's typically when the construction crews get out of there, but um, it looks really cool. And I think it really shows off this bridge. I mean, the, it, you know, there was so much vegetation around this bridge. It was really kind of hard to see, but I, you, you can see a little bit more of a historical perspective now that, you know, it's cleaned up a little bit. Um, coming from the south to the north from Railroad Street, you basically look straight down that, that gap where the railroad used to be, and it's, it's just a neat view. Um, this is looking south uh, from in front of Crane Brewing Company. You may have seen this. Uh, this has been in for a little while. It's actually some grass is growing there now. Um, 67th Street Bridge. Uh, this is before it was getting, it, it's getting some waterproofing now, so it doesn't look as clean as it, as it does in this photo, but you can see the pedestrian fence going up. It's gonna look fantastic. Um, and uh, that bridge is in really good shape and it's it's gonna look great up there. Uh, moving farther to the south, there's no trail between 67th Street and this structure or, or these structures. Um, this is a big bridge that's going to um, connect across this kind of valley at Wildwood Lakes. The old Railroad is to our left in this picture. You can't see it. Um, and there is an old trestle bridge up there. Um, and uh, we had to build over in this location because um, the, the fill that that old trestle bridge is sitting on is unstable. And we would have had to completely take that hill down and then rebuild it all the way back up. So um, this was a cheaper option, believe it or not. Uh, it's also going to look really cool. Um, it, it's a two span bridge. So there's going to be a pier in the middle. You'll have a hundred foot span and then a 200 foot span. Um, the bridge is delivered. It's sitting out there by, uh, um, by that kind of valley on the, on the South side toward Woodson. And um, it's got this kind of, you know, rustic patina steel look to it. Um, it's going to be, it's gonna be beautiful when they put it up there. Um, while I'm on the bridges, just a quick note, all the bridges uh, are rated for 20 tons. So, um, you know, first responders can drive across and can access kind of some of the more remote locations along the trail. Um, so an ambulance can go across the bridge if, if necessary. So, um, so that's all my photos of the trail currently. I do have a couple more things that I thought were interesting. Um, these are a couple of historic signs, historic signage um, that's gonna go on the trail. Um, this sign in particular is going to go um, just south of the 63rd Street Bridge, the existing 63rd Street Bridge. Um, and it will show, you'll kind of be able to look over that trench that you know, that deep cut section that the railroad went through uh, downtown Raytown there. And this is actually an image of, of that. Um, and uh, so, you know, I just think it's a really neat piece of history. You probably can't read this, um, you know, on your screen, but I have shared this uh, with Michael and, and, some, and the rest of the staff over there. So, uh, they can share this with you and, and you're welcome to read it and um, and check it out. We'll also have this historical marker down by uh, Railroad Street uh, we're near the location of the old depot. Um, it's got some historical information about Raytown, um, you know, about Carroll, Missouri, which I think was incorporated into Raytown at one point, if I'm, if I'm correct. And then uh, just some information about the railroad, some old photos, et cetera. So I thought you all may want to see that. 
And um, with that, I don't know how we're doing on time, but I will go ahead and wrap it up and I'm happy to um, answer any questions that anyone may have. Matt, this is Mayor McDonough. Um, I just want to say that the, the contractors are doing an absolutely beautiful job. I've been on the trail several times in different locations with the city administrator and others uh, looking at how they're coming along and I, I really appreciate that the planning and the engineering that were done coming through Raytown is just absolutely beautiful and I appreciate the fact that you guys um, took the time to make sure that we got such a beautiful swath through our city with that trail. It just looks fantastic. Well, thank you. I, I really appreciate the kind words. You know, a lot of times, especially early in the construction project, it's so hard to see what it, you know, it's hard to envision what the trail may look like when it's just kind of really disturbed from the grading and all that kind of stuff. But now we're getting to that point where you can really kind of see what it's going to look like. And I, and I think um, as that becomes more clear, uh, you know, people are going to love it. They're going to see how beautiful it, it, it really is going to be. And they're going to want to get out there and use it. So right. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I do have one other question where you were showing um, where the sidewalk comes down, the trail comes down in front of the Chamber of Commerce and then goes north, goes almost all the way to the 63rd Bridge and then it goes down under. Then there's another section that starts on the other side of 63rd that you showed that comes down uh, to go under the old wooden bridge. Do those meet somewhere where, I, I take it it collects the trap so that people don't have to go across 63rd or they don't need to, it collects along the going south on the traffic way and goes under the bridge or if somebody starts on 63rd street and goes down towards the old wooden bridge the old railroad bridge they all end up intersecting down towards the other side of the old wood bridge yeah so heading south from let's say we're we're heading south from 59th street you go under 63rd it, right. it kind of the trail will go parallel to the traffic way, you know, near the traffic way. Right. I think there's like a, I think I want to say there's a four foot separation from the roadway on the south side of 63rd. Right. As you approach 63rd, you go under and then it'll come back up to the traffic way. Okay. And on the south side of the traffic way, it'll be a little closer, but I believe there's a minimum of two foot separation, um, you know, which is within guidelines for for trail best practices um and and then it will just continue straight shot down raytown traffic way toward that trestle bridge the reason, um, the reason i asked that is because like you could also see the rail bed but the rail bed uh, obviously has been prepared to be flat and all that and i wasn't sure if part of that trail came down after the after the 63rd street bridge and came down all that way or if it comes back up and you just explain that so i appreciate it it does not. It okay. does not. So the trail at no point goes down into the trench. Okay. Um, or we don't even have a kind of access down there. Right. Um, we made the decision to stay out of, and I call it the trench, and I don't know if there's probably a better term for it. <laughs> but, pretty, uh, pretty well describes we made, it. <laughs> we, we made the decision to stay out of there um, because we didn't know how if people would feel comfortable on a trail going through that. And also in order to allow KCATA the ability to build a transit project on the center line of rail, um, it's just too tight down there right. uh, to do both. Okay. And so that was kind of the thinking behind that. Yeah, that explains it, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Anybody else? No. Mr. Walters. Uh, yes, I do have a question. Obviously, the destination going west is the Truman Sports Complex. Am I correct? Are there plans yeah, to go? Our, that's our northernmost trail. Okay. Are there plans to go westward from that point, either by, with by you or ATA, as far as uh, trail work goes? So there are there is a um, there are two trails that are pretty close to that trailhead, and they are the Brush Creek Trail 
which takes you into the plaza, and the Blue River Trail, which takes you into Swope Park. Um, they come together uh, at Coal Mine Road, and I think it's called Colorado Street. Um, those are both those are both uh, Kansas City trail projects. Um, if I if I understand correctly, that Blue River Trail will also extend along the Blue River to at least I think all the way to 17th Street. So we would like to connect to the Blue River Trail from you know from our trailhead to the Blue River Trail. Uh, and we've actually talked with Kansas City about this. We have not, there, it's very high level. The discussions have been very high level, but there is a mutual desire to connect those two trail systems um, because it would really, you know, it would open up a lot more possibilities for, for connectivity around our region. So Kansas City wants to do it. We would like to do it. It's more a matter of um, you know, plant some more planning probably, and then identifying some funding. Um, but, but that's the goal. Um, we've also, uh, spoken with city of independence a number of times. They have a goal to, um, connect to the stadium complex. Uh, they've got a project called Truman connected, I believe is what it's called. And it will connect their, the square in independence with, kind of the western edge of independence and, and they're trying to get a trail that will go all the way to our trailhead and and they're working with kansas city on that as well so that's been funded um so those are two kind of trail connections on our north end um and you know there's there's a lot of other opportunity i mentioned the um uh three trails retracement uh, i know that I believe that's going to cross through Raytown at 63rd Street. I think that's a great opportunity to have some signage or, you know, wayfinding. Um, so when, when folks do go there, they can access all the different places that are nearby. Um, Matt? So, so I, yeah, there's a lot of good opportunity for connectivity. Absolutely. I, I appreciate that. We're going to have to move on. we got one more presentation before we have our 7 o'clock meeting. I appreciate it. If anybody has any questions for you, can you give us your email address? Absolutely. My email is the first initial M Davis, my last name, at jacksongov.org. So M Davis at jacksongov.org. And um, my contact information is on my presentation. Uh, so again, feel free to share that with any of the uh, aldermen. And if anybody would like to reach out with a question, don't hesitate. Thank you so much, Matt. It's great to see you again. If I don't talk to you, if I don't talk to you beforehand, have a Merry Christmas. You too, sir. All thank right, buddy. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Okay, next is City Hall Improvement. Yeah, before I get started, I need to hand these out. Thank you. I apologize to our virtual attendees. You can't see what we're handing out, but essentially what it is is just a, a plan that's doing some illustrations, showing some finishes that we'll talk about here in a second. Um, thank you all for being here this evening. I'm going to try and go through this as quickly as possible. Before I do so, I want to say that um, it's, it's taking a lot of effort, and I mean a lot of effort, tremendous amount of effort to get to the point that we are with this project and so my appreciation goes to you all for your continued support Damon Missy all the staff here at Raytown our architects engineers who've all been helping us in McCown and Gordon uh, I'm gonna go through these sheets one by one so I'm hopeful that you all have these either on your person um, that were in the uh, agenda or the, the packet. Packet. packet, sorry. 
Um, the first, the first uh, plan is this um, site plan showing the entrance, the uh, entrance into the city hall, the, the exterior uh, south entrance. And you can see the new, the light gray, if you will, concrete areas, the, the new stairs, uh, the plaza, kind of the uh, front uh, standing area, the vestibule that's getting built, and then the, the path entrance or ADA path down to the sidewalk. Um, I believe we got a question on this the last time we presented this as to why we needed stairs. And if you flip to the next page, um, this is what I was trying to explain verbally, but hopefully this this illustration does it, this drawing. Um, this is essentially a cross section of the front entrance. And this dashed line that slopes, um, that's under the stairs, if you will, that's a that's a, the existing slope of the the sidewalk out front that you just walk out of the building right now. Um, in order to meet ADA code requirements, we have to have a flattened surface on the um, new exterior of the building. With the vestibule being there, we have to have a flattened surface less than uh, two percent. So that's what we're showing there. And as you can see, we need the stairs to get back down to um, new grade, if you will. Um, so that's really one of the biggest reasons for the stairs um, is, is because of, of that. I'm going to take questions when I get through this, if you don't mind. So the next sheet, A131, is, is showing really the walls, the layout of, of the new uh, remodel. The, again, on the south side, we have this vestibule. Um, we have the vestibule here. Got something cl climbing all over me. Um, and uh, if you look into this this room here, you'll see two kind of shades. Um, the larger rectangles are kind of this uh, ceiling um, that you would kind of see in most uh, newly remodeled office spaces, and then the darker shade. Um, next to that is is above the dais itself, and it and that's to show the wood finish that we're um, recommending for the new the new uh, remodel. So it's a drop a lowered ceiling, if you will, and then a higher ceiling. Then uh, beyond that, on on in the uh, AV room, we have the ceiling shown in there with the walls, and then the walls with the uh, uh, ceiling in there and then the vestibule um, on the east side of the building. Next sheet, A151. So we're going to touch on this here in a, in, in a bit, but um, in the vestibule area and in the dais area behind where the dais is right now, you'll see these kind of dashed. Uh, lines. This is illustrating where carpet, new carpet is going to go, um, as well in the other vestibule area on the east side. And we're going to get your thoughts on some carpet options that we have um, this evening. But essentially, um, uh, you can see this is more of a cleaned up without showing the ceiling version of, of uh, what the walls look like in the new remodel, a larger uh, break room, AV room, uh, new dais layout um, in here, and the ramp on the east side of the dais that goes to a door to get back into the break room. The next sheet, A161, um, gives us a, a better understanding of what the temporary dais layout looks like there on the left side and the permanent one um, with some seating options. Um, you can see in the temporary one on the left side it's it's a separated dais um, and I think somebody asked this question as well what does that temporary look like and it's going to look as close as possible to the permanent finish. 
Um, these are going to be uh, somewhat custom made uh, desks and things are not going to be covered plastic tables like we have right now. So it'll be still very professional looking um, for the city of Raytown as we hold our meetings. And then you also see some movable tables on where staff will sit as well and those will match the dais area as well. Um, back here on the permanent side on the right on the right side again you can see the seating kind of our architects have shown some seating layout there um, and then as well for the dais area um, the seating layout for the new dais area as well again looking at the break room some seating options for the break room in there and you can see in the break room we have um, uh, a refrigerator, a dishwasher, a sink, you know, some of the things that we have in there today. It's just a bigger space, more useful for staff. All right, moving on to um, A531. So this is a, a cross section of the dais, which you can see there on the enlarged plan on the top left side. Um, the layout of the dais itself it has a straight um, where, where the mayor and a couple aldermen will sit on, the, on both sides of him and then an angled on both sides. The walls in front of the dais from corner to corner are going to have this um, uh, Kevlar lining, bulletproof wall, if you will. Um, I think someone shared a concern about that. Um, you know, in an emergency situation, you basically can duck behind the, the dais, and it's bulletproof. That makes more sense. Um, it can happen to anybody. <laughs> yeah. But we wanted to at least point that out, that that has the Kevlar lining across the whole dais. All right, continuing on, um, looking at our HVAC, we have that you know bipolar ionization that we're doing in our HVAC units and our rooftop units. Um, the front vestibule is a completely separated um, airflow. That's on purpose. That's where the public comes in and out of. Um, the point of the vestibules is to uh, minimize the risk of people coming in here with any infectious you know, disease, concern, anything like that, to completely separate them from the building. As you know right now, you can, you walk in the doors, you're in the building. So the, the vestibules really help that. The, the uh, improved uh, bipolar ionization helps um, clean the air a little bit more, and then the vestibules help separate people. We can stop and turn them around if they have a fever or whatnot, if we're checking individuals at the door. We did ask about the airflow in this room specifically. I think somebody shared a concern about that. Um, we, we, we have shared that concern with our engineers, our HVAC engineers and our architects, and we're going to look at what we can do to improve the heating in this room. I think somebody talked about this room being cold, especially. We believe with new exterior doors, um, just a, somewhat of a, of a, a re reduced space, and better airflow, um, we're going to have a better product overall when it comes to, to heating. Next sheet, P101. Um, what we're trying to show for you here is the plumbing improvements. Um, we're going to go to touchless uh, plumbing fixtures um, in all of our bathrooms here in City Hall and in the uh, employee break room as well, uh, touchless uh uh, features in in the in the uh, plumbing areas, and then also in the uh, drinking fountain as well. It's gonna it's gonna have a drinking fountain like you would normally have, but also a bottle filler, um, which is a motion sensor bottle filler. You stick your bottle in front of it, it it shoots water into your uh, container. On a side note: We're also changing out in the police area of uh, their drinking fountain as well to be a bottle filler. Touch the spot for you. All right, E201. Um, this is really touching on some of the AV and security improvements. Um, 
first of all, security, we're kind of showing you here where camera locations are going, some key cards. This door right here um, that comes into the council chambers is right now is a hard key that staff has to use to get in and out, lock, et cetera. We're gonna change that to a key card, just a swipe badge. Um, we, we believe that that is a uh, more functional use. Um, security, we've been talking with PD about ways to improve the security as far as cameras in here. So, um, and not just in this room, but also on the exterior. We're gonna have two new cameras that focus on the entrances themselves. Right now our cameras focus on the parking lots, um, but we wanna know who's coming in and out of the building. Uh, so we're gonna have some, some new uh, features there. As far as AV, um, we're still gonna have projectors. We're gonna have screens that come down on the walls to improve the quality of the picture you're seeing. Um, the dais itself is gonna have plug-ins, both USB and three-prong uh, uh, three plug-ins uh, that you would normally see for power. Um, we're gonna have wireless microphones at each uh, station. And meetings like this, like the one we're holding right now, are gonna be far more um, easier um, when it comes to AV. We'll be able to present and show things easier in the event that we all need to go back to virtual meetings um, or half and half, kind of like we're doing right now, or even in person. Everything will be uh, better in presentation. And so um, this is, this is kind of what we're showing you here in terms of that. All right. So just to, as a reminder, this evening we're really just updating you. Our intent is to come back some point this month and bring you a contract for guaranteed maximum price to approve the construction of this project. Um, again, just as a reminder, we're working with McCown and Gordon as our contractor on that. Our architects have been extremely busy, so have the engineers, trying to get the plans completed. Um, this is a 65% plans, but for the most part, 65%, no more walls are moving. Things aren't really changing a whole lot. We're really looking at finishes, and, and to that point, one of the finishes that we wanted to get your all's thoughts on is the carpet. Um, we have picked out some finishes for the wood, the floor finish, the um, dais finish. All those finishes are in the conference room if you would like to see them. But the floor, the carpeting that we've uh, talked about earlier in the vestibules area and, and in the dais where you all are sitting, those are the areas where um, we would like your input if you have any. Outside of that, um, you know, a couple other features that we have, we have some wall boards to improve the sound in this room from the back side. We have wall boards that are going on, the, on both sides of the uh, mural there. We're doing some lighting to highlight the mural itself. We're also going to have a stainless steel, I believe, rail to protect the mural in front of it. Um, so there are going to be some other things that we do to really improve the look and feel of this room um, for, for us and for the public. And I believe that's all I have, um, and I'm here for any questions. Anybody have any questions at this point, Mr. Ron Myers? Jose, I didn't catch that. So the, is the tile remaining, or is it going to be swapped out for something? No, we, we have new flooring we're putting in. Okay. It's just going to be composite, whatever? It, yeah, it's, I, I, sh, I could go grab it and just show you. Yeah, it's, it's more of a, it looks like wood. It looks like a wood uh, flooring. It's light oak almost. Uh, okay, cool. Anybody else? Yes. All right, Bonnie and Mr. Ward. Bonnie, you go first, and then Mr. Ward, too. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just want to know, if we, will we meet our deadline for the end of December? Say that again. Are we going to be able to meet our deadline by the end of December? We're going to be able to meet the deadline by the end of December? Yeah, there's a deadline. December 31st is the deadline to have an agreement in place for construction. Right. Okay. Yes. Are we going to need it? We're going to, we're, we're going to try very hard, and we've been trying very hard, Alderman Mims. 
No, I don't want to hold you guys up because uh, we all know what is entailed in that if we don't need it. Thank Alderman, you. Alderman Ward. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Leon, how many square feet are we losing out of the current room to accommodate the break room and the AV room? Um, see if I can do some quick math here. I'm going to say it looks like around 400. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, very good. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Move for adjournment. Ms. Emerson, Ms. Meyer, you have a second. Bill for affirmation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone, anyone against? All right, we are adjourned. Be back in right at 7.